Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today from Brussels is Herant Kostanyan, who is an associate fellow at the Center for European Policy Studies there in Brussels, and is also associated with Kent University, and who is with us today to speak very briefly about a COP topic that's really quite complex, and that is the recent decision of Armenia by Armenia's president to join the customs union initiated by Russia with members uh, Belarus and Kazakhstan and in the near future apparently Armenia. Of course this comes four years after extensive negotiations between Armenia and the European Union for Armenia to uh, sign, join the association agreement. And on this complex topic we have Harant to help us think through some of the questions that will be raised, even if we don't yet have answers. Haran, thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Um, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, before we start, I have to make a small disclaimer. The views that I will express here today are only mine and not of the institutions that I'm associated with. Yes, yes, uh, clearly. We, we go through that with all of our expert guests. Thank you. Um, let's start with uh, just a basic calendar question. Uh, the, uh, Commissioner Fule, Commissioner Stefan Fule, who is the Commissioner for Enlargement, is scheduled to be in Armenia later this week. This is uh, something that's been on the calendar for a very long time. What do you think? Do you think he will keep to that schedule given the decision made by Armenia? Well, what we know is that his cabinet did not cancel this uh, visit thus far. But uh, we also know that there are now ongoing uh, internal consultations between the European institutions, mainly the European External Action Service and the European Commission, and the institutions also consult with the member states. And uh, the visit, as well as the other more important things, would be reshaped and decided also based on these consultations. As far as we know at the moment, the, the visit has not been cancelled. The reaction in Armenia was kind of surprising in that we thought that Europe's reaction was surprisingly mild, balanced. Uh, was that a surprise to you, knowing how they work on the inside? Of course not. There is nothing surprising in how the EU reacts in such a situation. But let's keep in mind, Europe, the European Union is a democracy. And uh, when there is a change of situation, when a country commits of doing something and it doesn't, there is no harsh reaction. Uh, the reaction is gradual and it's based on, as I said, a lot of consultations between the major EU foreign policy actors upon which is the decision made. But of course there, there is a reaction and there will be a reaction and this will constitute an important change within the eu armenia relations. I think that at this point it's probably fair to say we have lots more questions than answers. I'd like to raise a few. If you have answers, please, or if you just want to add more questions, that's fine too. For example, what happens to the, uh, the partnership, the Eastern Partnership? Where does Armenia fit in that? What happens to all of the various programs, cross-border programs, internal reform programs, all of that that the EU uh, through the delegation here supports. What happens to our ongoing relationship? More questions? Thank you. That's, uh, that's, that's I think, uh, good enough to start. Um, the, the, the central question now is, uh, rela relates to one aspect of the partnership, and that is association agreement. Of course, this includes also deep and comprehensive free trade area, but there's also visa, uh, uh, visa dialogue going on, on a separate track also. Uh, and there are all the other programs that you have mentioned. Um, those will be in a smaller scale for sure after what happened in recent days. But more importantly now, Armenia came out with a contra, if you, if you might say this, a contra proposal saying that it wants to sign association agreement without the DCFTA meaning it will keep more political part of the agreement and will take out more trade and sectoral part. Let's, let's draw, divide that up just for a moment for those who don't follow this carefully. The association agreement consisted, consists of two parts. The large part is the deep and comprehensive free trade agreement, right? I, if I am to divide it, I would say it consists of four major parts. First of all, it's uh, on a first part is on EU foreign and security policy. Second part is about migration. 
The third part is about deep and comprehensive free trade area. And the fourth is about sectoral partnership. And let's also say a few more words on sectoral partnership. This includes 27 sectors. So think of any sector, environment, energy, healthcare, science, education, uh, anything but trade. And the trade is dealt with in the deep and comprehensive free trade area. What Armenia wants to do is basically take out uh, the parts that relate to the trade and sign the political part. And I think this, uh, although theoretically in a long run this could be possible, but I think that practically this is not feasible. And I'll give you three main reasons for that. Uh, first of all, since uh, the start of the negotiations over three years ago, European Union ha has been very clear that those agreements are integral part of each other. You cannot divide deep and comprehensive free trade area from the parts on a, that are more political in the agreement. Especially in Armenia, where so much that is political depends on the economic. Definitely. And also, within the text, it's hard to uh, sometimes understand which part relates to what. And those things are intermingled. Uh, but uh, let's say, uh, let's go to the second reason. Besides this, that has been very clear. I mean, not, now I hear some statements that uh, this hasn't been made clear by the European Union, I would say no, it has been clear and it has been very clear. Uh, it was made in the start of negotiations clear and it was repeated regularly. If you, if you follow the EU statements, this, this deep and comprehensive free trade area was always portrayed as an integral part of the whole agreement. Let's not forget, this is one agreement. Those are not two agreements. This is one agreement with four major parts. And the other reason? Sorry? And your next reason? Uh, okay, then let's go to the next reason. Uh, next reason is the precedent. There is no precedent that European Union has uh, ever divided such an agreement uh, based on the partner country's choice, last minute choice, and, and uh, ratified only part of it. On the contrary, there is a precedent when a partner country asked for such an option or similar option and has been rejected. If European Union would reject Ukraine uh, with, with a similar request, why European Union will not re reject Armenia? And let's go to the third and probably the most important reason of why this, could, uh, this option of signing only one part is not feasible. And the third part is the basic bulk of this agreement is the trade or trade related parts. If you take all those parts out, you will be left with almost no substance. So signing this will be only um, barely an, uh, a symbolic uh, gesture and nothing really substantive. You will end up with an empty agreement and this could be done only for sake of having a deliverable, but not really a substantive agreement. There are those uh, who say that we don't need to get so concerned right now because after all, the customs union process has just barely begun. There's not a document there, uh, even when there is parliament, constitutional court, that this is a lengthy process. But isn't it true on the flip side that simply this announcement by itself is already capable of taking us out of the, the game? I wonder if the Brussels think tanks will continue to invite us on these discussions. I wonder if European projects will continue to take place. I wonder if we will continue to be on Europe's active agenda. After all, they're going to have to deal with China. They're going to have to deal with the uh, uh, trade deals with the US. Where are we going to fall? Merely the, the fact that there was such an announcement has been a huge damage to reputation of Armenia. Uh, it's hard now to talk in Brussels anywhere in the city, be that uh, think tanks or the institutions or, or other parts, um, as Armenia being a reliable partner. And this is very, very important for a country, for a small country. Um, but this is not the biggest problem. Uh, the bigger problem is that because Armenia took itself out of this process, and I probably shouldn't say Armenia, Armenian leadership took, took Armenia out of this process. Um, of course, the interest on, on Armenia is going to uh, fade away even more. It's a small country. It's not a priority for the European Union. 
it's not on top of the agenda. Um, the European Union has, we can already say, wasted resources and a lot of money already uh, on, uh, uh, during these last four years. And of course, the interests will, be, will fade away even more and uh, we will see less and less European engagement in Armenia. Okay, let me ask you a last question. Isn't it true that in this world of diplomacy and negotiation that the process is as important as the result? Isn't it true that had we been more transparent about this process from the beginning, a similar response, if in fact unavoidable, would have been received differently? Um, that, that, that's a very important point, especially when researching the EU. You would hear a lot uh, from the Europe, Europe, European Union that the process is actually more important than the result. It is the process that determines the state of democracy in, in every issue. And what we witnessed in last uh, f four years, over three years, is that um, there was a major agreement being negotiated between Armenia and the European Union. And the parties did not really explain this agreement to the people. Of course, there, it's a customary in international law not to reveal the text of the international agreement until it's signed. That's understandable. That's with any international agreement. And association agreement is an international agreement. However, European Union did not forbid you, the authority, authorities of Armenia to explain, to consult their citizens what this is all about. And the, and the people who, ha, who were the most, who would have been the most affected by this agreement, have been kept outside of the process. And this is a major, major problem. And today, of course, people don't really know what this is all about. They don't know whether they should stand for it or they should not support the process because they are simply not aware. And continuing this issue of democratic process, I think it is very important that when a leader of a country makes the most important decision, foreign policy decision of that country, on behalf of the country and people, he or she should at least once be consult prior to taking this decision to its citizens. And this also speaks about the sort of democracy, uh, state of democracy in Armenia. When the president takes the most important action where he takes, takes the country, which direction, which will be, which is a long-term policy, which is a very important policy, uh, without even once con consulting uh, its people, citizens. And again, it is the citizen that will be suffering because of this decision the most. Thank you, Harant Kostanian, who is with the Center for European Policy Studies in Brussels. And we're talking, obviously, about the European Association Agreement that Armenia has turned down in favor of the Russian Customs Union, something about which we will continue to speak on CivilNet. And thank you for following us on CivilNet. Mm -hmm.